you have your Bibles, open them to the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 1. The Gospel of Mark, chapter number 1. You say you're still in chapter 1? We are. I did a study of the week by week, paragraph by paragraph, uh, look at um, the Gospel of uh, Matthew. It took me a year and three quarters to get that done. I did one of... um, Genesis, and it took me two years. I promise it won't take us two years to get through Mark. When we, um, as we journey through the gospel of Mark, the one thing that we're going to see every week is the love and nature of God. The last time we looked at the scripture here, we saw Jesus on the Sabbath day enter into the synagogue and was confronted by a man who was consumed by the dark forces of sin. But what we saw was the loving compassion of Christ and we saw a man set free and peace in his life. We then moved to see Jesus and his disciples at Simon Peter's house and his mother-in-law was uh, sick of a fever. If any of you have been, we've all had a a high fever, a sick fever, a terrible feeling and you just ache all over. But Jesus came in, touched her hand and the word there is immediately. Immediately. Now, we saw that word immediately 11 times in the first chapter, and every time it means right then, not a delay, not a wait, just right then. Then, at the end of that day that began at the synagogue with him preaching, at the end of the day when sunset came, when when the Sabbath was over, all the hurting people, and there were quite a few there, just like there are quite a few hurting people today. All of the people came to where Jesus was because hurting people need to find rest. And they knew that there was hope in Jesus to find rest. So that's where they went. And what they found was a head-on collision with a holy God. It didn't really matter what their deficit was. Jesus met their needs. We all have needs. We all have hurts. We all have pain. But are we willing to approach a holy God? Are we willing to address the desires and needs of our heart? Will Jesus take you as you are? I talk to so many people and they think, as soon as I get my life cleaned up, I can go and and get close to God. Well, good luck with that. Because the only way you're going to get your life cleaned up is to find Jesus. That's the way you can get your life cleaned up. Just go. If you've got hurts, if you've got needs, approach a holy God. What you'll find is a God that loves like only he can, and he'll meet you there at your point of need. We are faced with circumstances every day that are bigger than us. The first thing we need to do is just admit that we can't fix our needs on our own, even though we try and try and try and try and try but we know that we can find our need met in Christ. So what we find here in Scripture, I thought this was cool, he went to church, met a need. Went to his family, met a need. Then everyone in the whole town, it says there in verse 33 of Mark 1, the whole city was gathered together at the door, and he met their needs. Long day, hard day, difficult day, tired. Weary. Y'all ever had those days? Of course you have. You just want to let your head meet a pillow and just begin with a little rest before you start the next day. But Jesus thought it was important to get up in the morning led by the Spirit of God and to go out to a solitary place because he knew Like everyone else, for him to face the challenges of the day, he had to go to God too. He had to find his strength there. Yes, he was the son of God, but he was also the son of man. He was human like us. So he set the example for us. And and let me say this, if it was needful for Jesus to pray and connect with God, what does they say about us? If he knew where the source of his power was, We should confess that just as well. So after this long, tiring day, he gets up and he goes and he just turns his face towards God and God answers and blesses. Now, 
in the morning, his disciples saw that he wasn't there and they began to hunt him because the first thing they're thinking was, that was an amazing day yesterday. You know, could you just imagine seeing one hurting person have their needs met after the next person, after the next person, after the next person? I mean, what a day. You, you can get tired just from watching everybody, from celebration. You can get tired just seeing the blessings hit other people. All the emotions that are, that are there. How many tears can you cry? How much joy can you have in your life? You know, it's almost as if the blessing is, is amplified if it's not just for us, but it's for someone else. As we see God do an amazing, mighty work there. So they're saying, come on back. We've got more work to do. There's more people to heal. But Jesus just said to them, let us go into the next towns, verse 38, that I may preach there also because for this purpose, I have come forward. Jesus knew he had a purpose and his job was to fulfill that purpose. Now, y'all look here. Every one of you have a purpose. Every one of you have a purpose. And with God, you can find the fulfillment of that purpose. If you chase it on your own, you're going to miss it. I have for years. How many times have you thought this job or that job or this relationship or that relationship? I'm very grateful that God let me find the right purpose, the right wife, the, the, the right vocation that is not a vocation, it's a ministry. I'm grateful that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above whatever we would want to ask him or even to think he's able to do so much beyond that. I love that verse. That's the kind of God we have. So he says, let's get up. Let's go to the next town. This is what I'm, I, I, I'm here for because the word needed to travel and the word had traveled and hope was arising like never before. But as they were traveling, it says in verse 40 that something happened. Read with me there in verse 40. Now a leper came to him imploring him, begging him, pleading with him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus, here's the words, moved with compassion. The love that was within him moved him. Matter of fact, I've told you this before. Anytime you're reading through the Gospels and you see these three words, moved with compassion, you knew Jesus was about to do something. He looked, he saw the need before. I mean, it was obvious to see the need. He had leprosy. I like it when the, 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 the blind person came to him and he said, what would you have me do for you? Would it, was it not obvious? The man was blind. and He said, I'm blind, can I have my sight? Jesus knew his need, and when he saw that need, he was moved with compassion, and he stretched out his hand. And, and hold on, did I miss something here? Hold on. In the verse 40, he said, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand, and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. And as soon as he had spoken, there's that word again. I mean, Mark loved this word 11 times in one, one chapter. Immediately the leprosy left him, and he was cleansed. Let's pray real quick. Father, my, my prayer is that in the next few moments, you will take this thing that happened in your life that Mark recorded, Luke recorded, and you would let it be applied to our life. So meet us here, because there's a room full of people who have needs who have hurts and pains. So you are the answer and hope springs eternal in you. So Lord, let it be revealed again today and let people find their strength in you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The place of our journey, it defines our story. The testimony that we have is sown in the through the fabric of hurts and pains. We would like to think that we could live a happy life with no struggles, with no pain, but that is what helps make our journey. The struggles, the strife, the hardships, and the happiness, the pruning that happens in our life that leads to new growth. 
Here is a man who was a leper who came to a point into his life when he faced the worst. Could you just imagine? Let's, let's just pause here for a moment and let's look at him. One day he looks down and he sees a pimple, but there's a white hair growing out of the pimple. He probably went to his spouse and said, look at this. What is this? She probably gasped, just as probably he had. And they probably tried to ignore. But when this happens in your life, one will lead to two. Two will lead to four. And you can't ignore. You might wear a long sleeve something to kind of hide the hurt and what might be. You know, we'll go to the doctors and they'll give us tests, but, you know, we always have hope. But then when the doctor says, bam, you get that sinking feeling. Oh, that's what happens to other people. That, that's not what happens to me. Could you imagine the worry, the anxiety, even among his family? Tears that his wife shed. His kids not really understanding, not willing to accept. The man could no longer be a father. He could no longer provide because the priest would call him, listen to me now, unclean. You must leave. You are a castaway. Could you imagine the feelings of no worth? Exiled. The loneliness that would come. The depression. I wonder how often he thought, my life is over. There is no cure. What is, is life worth living if I have to live like this? Who will provide for my family? Who will be there to comfort my wife? Who will lead and, and, and teach my kids? He felt helpless. Leprosy. In Scripture was always an example of what sin would do to your life. Sin would start small, but sin would spread. And it brought hurt and pain and eventually death. Sin, when it comes, it spreads. It takes over. And I hope you hear this. Sin is infectious to others. Your sin will not only affect you, it'll affect everyone around you. And when it spreads, it kills everywhere that it goes. Uh, leprosy, because people would cover it up, the places that you would obviously see it are the places that you could see, even though it would happen anywhere, the ear would become diseased, a nose would become diseased. The skin would literally rot. A person could have an ear that would fall off and they not even know it. Because the worst part of leprosy was not simply the disease to the skin. That wasn't the worst part. The worst part of leprosy is there is no pain. If you cut off my ear, Brother Mark, I would hit no, notes in the choir that, that no one's ever heard. Dogs would never hear, heard such a squeal. If I cut off a finger, it would hurt. But you see, because this disease came in and killed, there was no pain. So a person could break an ankle and walk around on it and not even know it was broken. They could be cut and not even know that they were bleeding. I haven't quite finished a book yet called Leadership Pain. I thought it was kind of unique how God gave me that book. When, when I was going to face this, but there was a person who had a child who had leprosy who literally bit off the end of her finger and was drawing with the blood. And it got to the place where, you know, cost, obviously they, they, the parents saw what was going on and they mended it and all that, but it, it got to the place where the, the child liked it and was biting off all of their fingers because they liked to draw with their blood because they didn't feel the pain. Pain is our friend. Pain is our friend. If you touch a hot iron, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn loose of it. 
Y'all know what I mean when I say quickly? I might even do a little bit of a dance. Amen? I'll think only holy thoughts. I'll turn loose of that thing, but if you... If there is an area of pain in your life and you do not know to turn loose of it, what will happen? Tragedy. Tragedy. How do you face the pain? Some people face it with hopes. Some people face it with wishes. Let me tell you the difference. A wish is that everything would change, but all the circumstances would change, but our actions never change. They're just hoping... It's kind of like you hope to win the lottery, but never buy a ticket. You just want to pick one up one where, and hey, I won the lottery. Ah. You know, it's just, instead of facing, they just wish things would change. What was it Einstein said? When you keep doing the same things over and over, but you expect a different result, that's called what? Say it good and loud. Insanity. That's what a wish is. But a hope is different. A hope is a, a change agent. Something's going to happen in your life, and my hope is in Christ. And the leper had heard what Jesus had done for others, and he knew what he was doing, so he said, I'm going to approach Jesus, though he was an outcast. He was supposed to go everywhere that he went. He was supposed to say, unclean, unclean, where people could leave. But, but Jesus was just traveling down the road with this entourage behind him, and, and he just came and ran to his feet and fell down before him. Now, hold on. What happened in that moment? You know the disciples and the other entourage said, Leper! And their first reaction were, to them was, leave. They may even pick up a rock and throw it at them like they chase them off like a dog. You're not welcomed here. You're an outcast. We don't want that. You're ugly. No, we don't want that. But when Jesus saw him kneeling down there, and the word there is begging. You know, sometimes... We never get to the end of ourself. Sometimes we never face our problems and our pains. If we do, we'll just say, oh, it'll go away, it'll change. That never happens. It never gets better on its own. But are we willing to come to God and say, please, if you don't come through, I'm sunk. All those feelings there, but we're, our pride will keep us away. But he was pleading. And he said these words, if you are willing, you can make me well. The word willing there. There's two words in the Greek for willing. One is by reason and one is by emotion. When you look at something and you, you judge it and you say, well, I should do this, that's by reason. But the other is by emotion. It says, I want to do this. He said, if you want to do this, I know you can cleanse me and make me well. You have the power. You've done it for others. But you know what he's really saying? What he's really saying is, I just don't know that I matter. I don't know that you do it for me. Have you ever felt so bad? How many of you believe God could do great things in your life? Have you seen that where God's done great and mighty things for other people? You know that he can, you know that he has, and you know that he will. You just don't know that he'll do it for you. Maybe you have such a small view of yourself, you're just saying, I just don't know if I matter at all. And Jesus said to him, I am willing by motion, by desire, be clean. Now, hold on. In the Greek grammar, in the laws of Greek grammar, when you look at this, as Jesus was saying it, it happened. It's two things that are happening at the same time. Jesus said it, touched him, not in six weeks. 
Not in six months. Not a progression of getting better. Come on. When Jesus said it, here's the word again, immediately. He's kneeling down. That means Jesus had to get down with him. And he touched him. Now, I know the disease takes away feeling. But because it was immediate, I am willing to be cleansed because it was immediate. He felt the touch. How long had it been since someone had touched him? Touch is an amazing thing. There's just something about it when you, when you, can I just say a holy hug? Now, y'all know I'm not a hugger, right? But there's a point in time when the greatest medicine you can have is a simple touch. I care is what it's saying. You matter is what it's saying. When a kid falls down as a kid and they scrape their knee or their ankle, what do they do? They get up and the parent goes like this and they just run and jump because they're looking for comfort. And, and, and just a hug will do. Now you can say, oh, it'll be okay. Still hurts, right? Don't cry. Big boys don't cry. Come on. Y'all hypocrites, you cried when you were a kid too. But the healing of a hug, of a touch. Peace is amazing. When something gets healed and peace comes in, that means all the things that broke the peace have to go away. I love saying this. I want a touch from Jesus that goes from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet and touches every fiber in between. Not because I'm great, not because I haven't made mistakes, not because I hadn't stumped my toe a thousand times, not because I hadn't done all the things wrong, just because a holy God, and he'll let me and say, we'll come together and we'll be one in peace. From the time he saw the first pimple with the hair in it, he never had peace until this moment because Jesus was his hope, his change agent. And his life, come on, was never the same again. Well, I wonder what it looked like to all those that were around. The disciples that were ready to throw rocks Screaming at him, yelling unclean. Because this happened immediately, they saw a leper fall to his knees at Jesus' feet, but they saw Jesus heal him, and he was raised up clean. I don't think he had a pimple. I don't think he had a mole. I don't think he had a hair out of place. Come on. He looked better than he did the day he was born. Because that's what God does. I think they were stunned. They had seen the, the lame walk. They had seen that Jesus could heal the blind. They saw the fever leave. But now they saw the healing from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Don't you know they celebrated? What would it be like to see the smile on that man's face? The recognition. Do you think he, do you think he said, well, thank you, Jesus. I appreciate you doing that so very much for me. Do you think he hugged Jesus back? Do you think he might have shouted? He might have been a Baptocostal at that moment. Amen? He might have even danced. My dad used to say a Baptist, dancing to a Baptist is when they, they tap their toe inside their shoe and nobody knows it. That's <laughs> dancing to a Baptist. God help us. Look, it was the expression from the outside in that brought the pain. It was the expression of the inside out that brought the joy. Jesus is that. 
Then Jesus told him, verse 45, or excuse me, verse 44. He said, see that you say nothing to anyone. Go your way, show yourself to the priest. Offer for your cleansing those things which Moses commanded as a testimony to them, as a testimony to the priest. You know what Jesus said? You don't need to tell everybody else, man, I, I got people coming after me from every angle. No, 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 no. What you need to do, the law, Leviticus 14 says you're supposed to go to show yourself to the priest, the one who had been proven an outcast and thrown out. You have to show that you are healed. Then you take two birds. One will be sacrificed and they'll take the blood of that bird and it will be caught in water. And they'll take the other bird and they'll put oil on it, showing the healing. And they'll take the, the, the water with the blood mixed in it and, and drip it over the bird. And then listen now, and turn the bird free because the one who was, one has to die so that the other one can be set free. Is that not the most beautiful picture of salvation? Jesus died and the blood could be, by the healing of the Holy Spirit, the healing of the, of the oil with the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all of our sins and we are set free. Once like a bird in prison I dwelt. No freedom from the sorrow I felt. But Jesus came and he said to me, and glory to God, I got one that knows it. Y'all don't, y'all never heard he set me free? I'm not going to sing it for you. My boy can sing a whole lot better than I can. Praise God, Jesus can set us free. We got a choice. This man could have stayed with the lepers as a cast out, dying from the outside in. Or he could have felt the pain of his sin and his need of healing. And we can run to God. There's a lot of things that will keep us from God. There's a lot of things that we just think that we can put up with and we can live with. Why? When we have a God who can change. There's nothing our God can't do. There's nothing, I, there's nothing that our God is not willing to do. Isn't it beautiful to see the person who is so covered up by the pain be released? That can be you. We talked about unforgiveness in Sunday school. Hebrews 12. It can become a root of bitterness. That as it grows, it will defile. Be careful of the brokenness. Be careful of the things that keep us down when Christ wants to lift us up. 